You've got small space, which we only had here. Imagine all these trees down here. You would never have walked down here. That's one point. So good against the back wall. Good for directing it towards the north and getting good sun. Good for putting it against the brick wall where you're going to absorb that heat of the day and reduce your chance of frosts. But the most important thing here, oh, and also ease of picking, you can imagine it's all just here. But the thing that's best about it is, instead of all these shoots going straight up in the air like these ones, where the sap just goes up and just makes growth, here the sap's being slowed down. And where does it go? Is it going horizontal? Into the fruit. So you actually get better, better fruit. So eventually there will be, you can see some on that tree, hanging fruit here and they will be, um, and, and that's the idea. And some people are against this in principle, they're forcing a tree into a position it's not, doesn't like. But to be honest, these trees are basically wild, you know, they want to grow into a huge, big, unkempt bush that you can never get any fruit there full of thorns. Nah, I, I, I personally, I love espalier trees. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this tree at this bar and stop this tree at this one. Otherwise, you'll get crossings over and you'll get your pears and your nashies all mixed up and everything. And, and, and I think it's enough's enough. You see these branches here, look how thick that's getting. That will be that thick one day. So if we got two coming across each other that thick, we got problems. Hands up, anybody been to Spring Hill Nursery? Yeah, have you seen their espalier fruit? How fantastic, you know? It is like a builder has made it. It's got this central beam this wide and each one is across that way and it's just a, a sight of beauty. They haven't even made these mistakes. You see what we've done here? We sort of planted this and that one's all right. It's nearly on its horizontal, but look at this one. I've brought that up out of desperation because I had them so close and nothing coming out here. But look, this one's coming out. Maybe when that one grows longer, I'll get rid of that one and make him go along there. Is that clear to everyone? The problem is half of them will come out in the wrong direction. So say this one. Everybody got that one there? Useless, yeah? It's going to block us here. It's not the point we're trying to achieve. So he goes. Whereas I'm going to leave him. You don't know for now, for this year. Uh, no, I'm not. They're going to go because we've already got one and two here. Yes, and they're not threatened. And I'll just pin, you can always pinch these things off if they're just at this stage, you know what I mean? Saves you snipping. No, he's good. He's part of this horizontal one. All right, so let's move on and just to get an idea down here, how we're gonna quickly neaten this up. We certainly don't want long lengths like that. It's doing the opposite to these horizontals. Sorry, Dal, I'll just move you back. I wouldn't wanna, hello, Olivia. Now, I'm going to chop these little ones off, but I'm not going to chop them off right down to the base like I did here, because the old wood there produces fruit. And next year, this little extension I've left there will produce, will be old wood again. So we don't mind little short stumps called spurs, and that's where the fruit will hang. So it's not entirely horizontal, there's little bits. So, you know, I'll take off that and that, and suddenly you can start to see, again, we've got horizontal with a bit of all of these all right we've got a straight line across there and fruit will hang down okay and that one's coming from this one that one if there was nothing here I would use that one but we got a good good here so he goes there you go imagine that keep going now we don't have one here do we or we got one here. Hold that, Noe. This is my daughter, Noah, everyone. I'm Greg, by the way. Sorry. I live locally in Washington Lane. I, got, they, I found these at the hardware. They're great. Much better than I was tying them all these years, which is very tedious. And the ties rot. These don't. So I'll just um, pass a, grab some of these and just pass them around so you can see. I recommend them. Ah, uh, where did I? I bought them online, eBay. That's what I did. Bunnings or something. But maybe Bunnings, yeah. But I bought a big thousand lot of them for twenty bucks. <laughs> no, I think they're for fruit trees. Yeah. All right. The other thing is, well, there's a certain height here too. We got no further. Our poles end here, so we definitely, definitely want to do that. You see how that's done there? We only want horizontal. 
So is that enough of a spalliard? Yeah? Alright. Say it again. <laughs> Alright, we're asked species, good question. You need trees that when they're young, they're flexible. Okay? Now I'll give you two extremes. All your pears and apples, very flexible. Look at this. So when they're young and they're putting out their first year shoots, you know, this is this year's, their current wood, you can lay that down, no problem. Now other trees, I can think of um, apricots and uh, uh, um, oh, persimmons. You touch them, they snap, even in their first year. No good. Yeah. The other thing is, if you're going to try this, don't try and force a tree that's already like what we did up that end into this. It doesn't have that central spur. You need to look for a tree that's basically got one trunk and plant it and then watch. And as soon as you see, or as the lady said, force the branches to come out where you want them if you learn how to do that. And that's, that's it. And I, I actually feel that this is very limiting, just these wires. I like chicken wire or mesh, because if it comes out here, you've got a wire to put it on straight away, rather than waiting for one exactly on this thing. And it's very hard to keep this t at least tense. It doesn't have to be tight, but they do get slack, you know, slack. Say it again. I don't think it matters. I, 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 I use chicken wire because it's the barrier between my orchard and my veggie garden. So I'm just hiding that with the spalier trees. Mesh is good because it's nice straight, whereas chicken wire is hard to find that straight line. Who cares? It's all good. All right? One thing important though, if you've got chicken wire, don't put your little tiny branch that's coming out and feed it through the chicken wire. Any reasons why? Get yeah, it'll get this big and it'll get strangled or, you know, swallow up the chicken wire. You've all seen that.